Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Welcome, success, Salatoli, Jeffina, and uh, John Paul. Uh, we'll begin class. Can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Can any one of you lead us in prayer? Zanatoli, can you lead us in prayer, please? Right. Go ahead, success. Let us pray. The most precious Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to give you all the glory. We want to thank you because you are faithful. Thank you, Lord, because you have been our God all this while. Be that glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning we commit our lecture into your hands, O Lord. Father, please inspire us with your words through your daughter this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, success. Uh, so last week we began uh, lesson six. Uh, and we saw that uh, kingdom building is not about uh, building, uh, just building churches or preaching or writing books or, uh, you know, just about producing songs and albums. Uh, you know, as, as important as all of those are, or even, you know, just having conventions and uh, uh, crusades and uh, uh, different uh, programs that we plan, all of that are important. But uh, kingdom building is about building people. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we said that when we build people uh, is when we have them in our hearts, when we value people, when they become very important for us. It's not because uh, I, uh, I'm called to do this, so I have to do this. Um, but it's when we write people in our hearts or when we keep people in our hearts, it's basically, you know, when people become very uh, important for to us, uh, they're valuable, they're precious to us. Um, uh, you know, we they are like sheep that God has entrusted to us. Uh, we are accountable for their, uh, you know, their spiritual growth, their uh, maturity, spiritual maturity. And, uh, you know, when we write people in our hearts, uh, we give, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 we so uh, can give God the permission to, uh, you know, allow us to write into the hearts of people. Okay, so when we have people in our hearts, it basically allows us uh, the room or gives us the privilege or the opportunity, God-given privilege and opportunity to write into uh, people's uh, lives or to speak into their lives or, uh, you know, uh, to bless them, to minister to them, to, uh, you know, help them in their spiritual journey, in their spiritual maturity, in their spiritual walk with um, uh, God. Okay, and we saw that uh, as an example in... Paul's very life, you know, uh, Paul says that, you know, if he stands before uh, uh, the throne of grace or before the judgment seat of God, it's he's not going to be boasting about all his missionary journeys, the number of churches he planted, the number of, uh, you know, leaders he trained and raised up, the number of people, uh, you know, uh, or uh, the, the number of episodes he wrote, but basically he's, you know, he says, my joy, my pride, uh, uh, my hope is uh, you. You know, you people whom I have ministered to, and, um, uh, and that is his. He says is his uh, reward, and uh, we also see that uh, you know he mentions that he is uh, uh, he is written people in his heart, in his life, and how valuable people are to him. And uh, we also saw that uh, in I think it is. Uh, you know, um, First Peter chapter two verse five. It says that you know Paul, uh, Peter's writing and he's saying, you know, people are the living stones. They are being built up into a spiritual uh, house, a holy priesthood to offer uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable um, uh, to God. Okay, so. Um, uh, we need to, you know, people are important in the kingdom of God. Uh, when we are, when we are, uh, you know, uh, stepping in to be kingdom builders, or we want to be people who uh, extend God's kingdom on here on earth, we are here to build God's kingdom. Uh, we need to get our priorities right, our focus right. Our focus is not just to, uh, you know, get name or fame or have a big church or have a big building or you know the number of programs that we conduct. Uh, you know. Uh, 
but it's people who are important. It's uh, it's uh, uh, you know ministering to people, keeping people in the center of our lives, our hearts, ministering to them, uh, speaking into their lives, and everything that we else that we do, you know, should be revolving around. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the needs of the people, where they are, uh, the people that they're ministering to, where they are, where they stand in their spiritual walk, in their journey, and uh, hence doing things to um, basically minister to them, uh, to help them in their uh, growth, uh, uh, in their spiritual maturity in the Lord. Okay, And then we looked at practical keys to building people by the Spirit. Um, uh, we said the first point was some of the practical keys we said was to recognize God's purpose for individuals. Each uh, each individual has uh, a plan and purpose that God has for them. Uh, recognize it and help them to grow towards that position people uh, uh, and uh, to release them to their divine potential. That's the second thing. Third thing is help people to discover and develop uh, their gifting, their calling. Uh, the fourth thing is nurture life for life, you know, um, uh, it's not about uh, uh, the messages that we preach and all of those things, uh, but it is about uh, basically, you know, um, uh, we ourselves, uh, you know, before we preach those messages, we might preach it with uh, great zeal, enthusiasm, with, uh, you know, style, with the, uh, the words, uh, uh, and all that is very important. That is good. We need to focus on that as well. Uh, but the important thing is before we preach, we need to live it out ourselves. Uh, you know, we have to act it on ourselves uh, before we uh, reveal a, re a new truth, a fresh truth, a new revelation. It's something that we need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, we need to, uh, you know, uh, 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 appropriate that truth in our own lives before we uh, teach it out, before we bring forth that revelation. Because when it becomes uh, something that is lived in us, is part of us, is something that we appropriate in our own lives, and then when we minister it to others, you know, it will be like um, uh, leading people uh, into the light. If not, it will be like a blind person leading another blind person, and we know what uh, happens, you know, uh, usually we end up uh, the the person can lead the other person and they can a blind person can lead another blind person and they can fall into a, a ditch okay the fifth thing is avoid uh, insecurities whatever insecurities that uh, we have we need to deal with those insecurities um, otherwise those insecurities can become a hindrance a stumbling block from us to uh, you know speak into the lives of others minister to um, other people basically being overprotective over con uh, controlling uh, you know, being overly authoritative, um, uh, all of these arises by our, from our own insecurities that are deep within. It results uh, or it shows forth, it brings forth uh, as, uh, you know, uh, in our actions where we can be over controlling, uh, over authoritative, uh, and to an extent where uh, instead of basically uh, ministering to people, uh, you know, blessing them or being a blessing to them, uh, we can start controlling uh, their lives. The sixth one we said was, uh, you know, bring correction when required, but uh, correction is important. We don't overlook correction because uh, thinking that, you know, we will lose people uh, or they leave our church or, uh, you know, the relationship uh, that we had once uh, uh, will, uh, will get strained, um, uh, you know, but uh, when correction has to be brought about we need to bring those correction that correction uh, with the guidance and leading of the Holy Spirit also uh, you know uh, doing it in love um, uh, you know correcting the sin in the persons the wrong in the person and not going against that person it's not hurting that person but it's genuinely caring uh, for uh, you know the person who is doing things that you know uh, can destroy their own soul their own spirit their spiritual walk with God uh, so that should be our motivation that should be our interest and when people see that in us they will understand uh, you know uh, the reason why we are correcting them. The seventh thing uh, is bringing maturity in all uh, areas uh, of people's life, and that is where uh, we stopped. 
okay so um, our goal is uh, you know in building people uh, is building them by the spirit so it's with the help of the holy spirit and it's also uh, you know uh, uh, where we develop them into spiritual maturity in all areas of their uh, uh, christian living um, so can somebody please read ephesians chapter 4 verses 13 to 15 please Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. Then we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the full measure of the fullness of Christ, then you will no longer be in fact soft and cold by the and blown here and there by every good teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their disciples. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. Thank you, Jeffina. So uh, in this verse, uh, in these verses in Ephesians chapter 4, we see that, you know, uh, we all need, uh, you know, to come to that unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we all need to come to that place where we are growing uh, into the full stature of uh, the full the fullness of uh, Christ to being like Christ being Christ like in our thinking in our uh, mannerism in our way of doing life in the way that we act uh, the way that we um, uh, live so you know sometimes when uh, in ministry or uh, in church or in kingdom building you know we uh, basically focus on people's gifting and their calling but we kind of overlook uh, the character you know and we we already learned uh, in this uh, in the previous chapters in kingdom building and uh, in the kingdom of god that uh, you know um, character is so important you know uh, uh, our gifts can take us but uh, to places where our character can't keep us so if our character is not good then you know whatever talents whatever gifting that we have will hold uh, uh, no place you know will not give us the opportunity or the uh, uh, or the position to minister or uh, to do or to flow in the gifts or the talents that we have uh, because of our character so character is uh, uh, is so important uh, you know a character as we said is the wine skin and uh, our talents and the gifting is the wine so if the wine skin cannot hold the wine no if the wine skin just bursts it will just uh, you know the the wine can just uh, uh, fall out it will be such a waste so if our character is uh, not molded is not good is not christ-like then you know uh, uh however gifted and talented we are it will have no place it will not uh, hold so it's important that you know we learn to relate to people apart from their uh, uh, gifting okay don't always uh, talk about uh, people's uh, calling and gifting uh, you know or look at that and make that uh, uh, as a requisite to give them leadership positions and places of authority uh, and a responsibility in the church but it's important to look at their um, uh, character because if they have character issues uh, you know that can result in uh, in disunity and strife and jealousy and hatred and pride and basically will end up in uh, the total breakdown of that uh, of that group or that ministry team or that organization or even the church can bring a uh, division so character is important so look for character and then see if the person's character is good then you know and they have the gifting and the calling for that spe uh, specific area then we can release them uh, uh, into their roles and their responsibilities uh, in the area that god has uh, called them with and also when we're dealing with people we need to deal with their heart issues uh, you know basically people going through uh, 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 the abuse that they've gone through uh, in their past whether it's physical abuse or sexual abuse uh, or whether it's uh, you know feelings emotional uh, trauma abuse that they've gone through of rejection uh, insecurities emotional hurts um, 
you know, uh, a rebellion, uh, a rebellious nature. Uh, sometimes people can uh, cover up, you know, their uh, inward uh, rebellious nature by their gifting, their calling, uh, their talents, and we're not able to see it. Uh, but once they get into that uh, responsibility or the role or the leadership position, uh, then we're able to, you know, see uh, how they function, how they relate to people, how they are, uh, you know, carrying on their responsibility. And we're seeing that people are uh, in the process being hurt, uh, lives are being destroyed. It's basically because, you know, uh, the heart issues of the person has not been uh, dealt with. So even as we are ministering to people, building people by the spirit, uh, it's not just important for us to uh, uh, just teach them from God's word, uh, give them fresh revelations, uh, get them to flow in the gifts of the spirit. Uh, uh, all that is very important important but also need to you know look at the various other aspects of their life you know uh, deal with people's uh, character uh, their emotions uh, you know uh, the practical aspects of their life marriage uh, uh, children relating to their parents choices decisions that uh, we make so our uh, uh, us our uh, sermons or uh, you know bible study groups that we have whatever we are teaching them uh, topics that we choose can uh, you know can also be related to uh, people's own um, personal uh, life issues uh, character issues, uh, uh, emotions, the mind, uh, you know, behavioral issues, and all of these can be taught to them so that people can be benefited from by knowing, you know, what is uh, in the Word of God, how they need to live their lives, um, how they need to walk their uh, lives, uh, and uh, that God is more interested uh, not in just their gifting and their calling, but, uh, you know, how they live their everyday lives, the choices that they make, uh, and in, in them being more. Uh, Christ like also dealing with the personality issues like uh, you know uh, being whether they're short tempered or uh, not being able to relate to people um, and their own uh, independence being very authoritative we need to deal with such issues deal with lifestyle habits um, you know maintaining a good testimony before people uh, also managing time money uh, and so on okay um, also need to identify and break limitations that people put on themselves you know uh, people some people are very talented very gifted uh, but because of past failures uh, or emotional hurts or what people have spoken over their lives how their feelings of rejection their feelings of insecurity uh, they think they're hopeless good for nothing if they do something they will fail uh, you know uh, there'll be a disappointment uh, they'll ex they'll uh, again go through that whole cycle of rejection and uh, feeling insecure uh, so it's in, and you know people get closed up they withdraw themselves they don't want to uh, uh, you know use the talents and gifts that God has given to them so it's important when we identify uh, people uh, that God has placed in our lives to journey along with for the specific seasons or uh, seasons in life you know it's important that we through the help of the Holy Spirit look at uh, their gifting, uh, their talents that God has blessed them with, their calling, and whether they're using it to the full extent or whether they have started using it, whether they're growing in it. So people who have not begun, we need to encourage them, give them uh, small, uh, you know, uh, openings where they can use their talents, gifts, uh, motivate them, um, also, you know, train them up. Uh, good to have training for our, uh, for the teams that work in church. Uh, for if you're the leader of a team in your church, you can have a, a training session. Uh, basically, get involved in their own personal lives, how they're doing, their journey with the Lord, uh, uh, the intimacy with the Lord every day. It's important to you know keep a check on that, help them to grow, and uh, you know we can uh, uh, you know. Uh, thus help people grow in their uh, in their gifting their calling the areas and then we can see later on you know they come to a season where god is uh, asking them to step out uh, into a leadership role go somewhere else and you know uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know build god's kingdom uh, start uh, by themselves building god's kingdom and uh, hence we can see that 
you know each one of us have been instrumental in uh, in 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 giving into their lives in ministering to their lives and uh, you know they're in a place where they can uh, set out on their journey on their own and so this is what we need to do you know identify people that they're, they're gifting their talents and uh, build them up and also uh, you know, if uh, people who are, um, uh, you know, using their gifts and talents, uh, we can encourage them to grow uh, more, uh, you know, uh, to grow in deeper uh, depths of, in their intimacy with God, uh, how they can glorify God in a greater measure, how they can use their talents and skills, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, to raise up to higher levels. Uh, also identify and break uh, cycles of failure. You know, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, even in our own lives, we can, when we look at our own lives, there can be cycles and patterns uh, that happen. Uh, these cycles and patterns uh, are very dangerous and we need to break those cycles and patterns uh, because it's not of the Lord. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to step into everything that God uh, has for us. For example, you know, cycles and patterns of depression, you know, you can, you uh, uh, you can be depressed and then you can come out of depression when somebody prays for you, somebody is uh, helping you along. And then, uh, you know, something happens, uh, a situation arises and it triggers back the depression and then you can get back into the same uh, cycle. So your life is going in cycles uh, and in, in basic patterns and, uh, uh, you know, we need to break those because those can be so demonic um, and, um, you know, uh, when we sense this in people's life as well, uh, people that God has entrusted to us, uh, going through these cycles and patterns, we just have to uh, break them. Okay. The eighth key uh, or the practical key that uh, to help people uh, uh, while we're building them up in, in the spirit is to release them into their uh, calling you know even as uh, we invest into people's life they mature they grow into their calling um you know uh, uh and the grace that god has given to them uh as i said you know god can uh, uh want them to step out you know and start a new work or go to another place or uh you know go to another so-called uh, uh nation and just uh, you know start building God's kingdom and when uh, when they sense that and when they come and tell uh, share that with you you know sometimes we don't want to release people because uh, we think that we have spoken in their lives we've built them up uh, we have invested so much of our time our effort um, and now if they go away who will you know fill in that position who will take on that position but uh, you know just as we welcome them very happily when um, uh, they were willing to step in to take on uh, responsibility uh, when they're willing to step out you know we need to release them with the same blessing with the same joy uh, just bless them let them go um, knowing that uh, you know uh, uh, this is god's work you know god brought them in god is taking them away this is god's plan uh, and god knows that there is uh, you know a vacancy there there is a gap that needs to be filled god will bring in uh, the right people but uh, you know if we are very authoritative over controlling uh, you know those times we don't allow people to go out uh, we kind of control them say no i think it's not god's call uh, you're still learning you still have to grow uh, you can stay here for a year or two just thinking that you know in a year or two you will find somebody else to fill in that place uh, and uh, that is not right that is manipulating people that is controlling people uh, and that is not godly and that is not what uh, we need to do but uh, you know, we need to uh, release them, uh, let them go, uh, you know, and even as uh, we let them go, just bless them uh, and, uh, you know, uh, just speak uh, God's blessing over their life. Look at what uh, 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 Paul did to young Timothy and to Titus. Um, you know, Paul raised up these young men and he left Timothy at um, uh, at Ephesus uh, in First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. He says, as I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they may teach no other uh, doctrine 
Okay, so he's just uh, left Tim uh, uh, Timothy uh, at Ephesus to oversee the churches at Ephesus, and uh, he's just telling him, you know, continue to be there, uh, you know, uh, uh, take over the charge that has been given to you, uh, so that you know uh, these uh, people who are bringing in false doctrines, the church will not uh, do so. And he also says this to uh, Titus, who le he leaves in the island of Crete. Uh, in Titus chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, he says to Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this reason, I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that you are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I uh, commanded you. Okay, so even as Paul has left them, um, uh, in these uh, cities to oversee the work there, uh, uh, you know, uh, Paul is just giving them the liberty, uh, you know, uh, to do what he has trained them and he has this confidence that he's trained them uh, and, you know, Ephesus being a very difficult place, you know, Timothy is the right man, he put him there, uh, Crete as well, he's put Titus there and he knows that, uh, you know, uh, the training, the upbringing uh, and uh, uh, the years that these two young men have been with Paul, have seen his own life, has seen his own ministry. Now they are able to take on their responsibility, um, and he just lets them to, you know, uh, uh, take on uh, the responsibility and do what they have been entrusted with. So even as uh, you know, we entrust people with responsibility, give them the freedom, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, to express their own creativity, what the Spirit of God is leading them, guiding them. Of course, you can uh, oversee things, you can guide them, you can lead them, uh, as Paul does, you know, uh, he hears uh, uh, news from uh, Ephesus and from Crete, and then he writes back uh, uh, to Timothy in, the, uh, in his epistles, the first uh, letter to Timothy in the second epistle as well, Second Timothy, and uh, he writes the, uh, the epistle of Titus to uh, Titus and just encouraging them in the areas where uh, they need, uh, they're lacking, what they need to do specifically. Uh, so you can do that, but, you know, just give them the freedom to fly and do things on their uh, own okay uh point nine uh, another practical key is continue to be their spiritual support uh, when needed uh, don't abandon them you know um uh, saying okay uh, uh they have decided to leave go and uh, start their own work uh, you know, continue to, uh, uh, you know, build them up, nurture them, find out how things are going, uh, you know, pray for them, uh, call up sometimes, just pray. Uh, but like we see, you know, Paul writing, uh, write letters to them, uh, encouraging them, speaking to their lives uh, and continuing to uh, build them up. Okay, um, and then we, uh, the tenth one, the tenth practical key is uh, restoring those who uh, fall. Okay, uh, so you know here it's uh, we see in uh, in the church at Galatia, you know uh, where Paul uh, uh, starts this church. He uh, he builds up this church. He you know he's uh, uh, he's uh, brought in the new believers, uh, and he says he's writing to them, and he says you know uh, in Galatians chapter six verse one. Can somebody read that please? Galatians chapter six verse one. Anyone can read Galatians chapter 6, verse 1? Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. Thank you, Jeffina. I'll just put up the PDF so that uh, you can follow through. Just uh, give me a second, please. Okay.
Okay, I think uh, I'll do that in the break. It's basically, it's a new uh, laptop, so I'm just uh, trying to figure my way through. Okay, uh, so here we uh, we see that. Uh, uh, sorry, Jeffina, which reference you read? Uh, Galatians chapter six, verse one. Pastor. Verse one. Okay, thank you. So uh, Paul is writing to the church at Galatia, and he's uh, saying that you know if. Uh, a man has, uh, you know, sinned or missed the mark, or you know, he's gone beyond the boundaries uh, that he's uh, uh, he's not supposed to go. You know, uh, a trespass is going beyond the boundaries, breaking the rules. You know, he says those who are spiritual, uh, in the spirit of gentleness, uh, you know, should uh, in love, in gentleness, in kindness, uh, restore that person um, back again. Okay, and we see at times, you know, um, uh, there are many people who have gone back, fallen back, who have sinned, and uh, you know, uh, Paul uh, writes about them, and he uh, he talks about how to um, handle them. You know, he says, um, uh, if you look at uh, your uh, the last point uh, in this chapter, uh, he's talking about uh, some of them in Philemon chapter one, verse twenty-four; uh, Second Timothy chapter four, verse. Uh, uh, 10 in first timothy he is also telling warning uh, uh timothy you know uh to be careful of hymenius and alexander uh, and uh, paul says you know uh hymenius and alexander have uh, uh you know shipwrecked their faith uh, their faith is shipwrecked um and uh, you know um and he says you know i have delivered them over to satan that they may learn not to blaspheme okay or not to blaspheme so here we see uh, you know uh, when we read this we can think okay how uh, cruel of paul you know to write this or to say uh, that you know because these people have uh, gone away from their faith their faith is shipwrecked you know he's delivered them over to uh, satan Okay, uh, we can think that's very rude or that's uh, not what Paul should have done. But basically, you know, uh, what Paul is uh, saying here is, you know, uh, uh, he's, you know, send them away from the, the church or the congregation or the spiritual covering uh, that is there. So when the spiritual covering is, uh, you know, is no longer on them, you know, they're open to the attacks of the evil one. And when they're open to the attacks of the evil one, we know that when we are open to the attacks of the evil one, we suffer, we go through a lot of suffering, uh, pain, difficulties, and um, uh, when we go through pain, suffering, and difficulties, uh, you know, it brings us uh, sometimes or most of the times it can, uh, you know, bring us back to the Lord saying, God, please forgive me. You know, I've gone away from your ways. Uh, I want to realign my will to your will. I want to come back. I'm sorry for uh, everything that I've done. Um, and then when we do that, when we uh, ask for forgiveness and we repent of our sins, we, we are under the spiritual covering again and Satan has no access over our lives. Uh, and that is the uh, the uh, the the plan the motive that uh, you know Paul is writing this not that he hates them not that he wants them to go to hell uh, not that he wants their lives to be destroyed but he's saying that you know he's left them over to Satan means they're no longer under the spiritual covering and when they're no longer the spiritual covering or protection they're open to the attacks of the evil one and uh, somehow uh, through these means you know, they can uh, come back to their senses, come back to their mind, uh, knowing what they're doing is wrong. Uh, and that can bring them back uh, to the ways of the Lord, uh, repent of their sins. And then when they repent, they come back into uh, their spiritual covering and protection and uh, continue their journey, uh, their walk with uh, God. But in Second Timothy, you know, 4, 14 and 15, he's talking about Alexander the coppersmith um uh he's telling timothy you know um be careful of him because he's done much harm to him uh it's uh you know uh, uh paul uh, some commentators uh, uh, write and say that it was because of alexander that uh, you know paul is under his, his second roman imprisonment uh and uh, this time Paul knows that he is, uh, you know, death is uh, evident. Uh, uh, he's not going to uh, escape death this time. Uh, he is going to die, and hence he's writing, you know, for Second Timothy, even his letter to uh, Titus. Um, and uh, so we see that uh, 
you know, Alexander was instrumental in, uh, you know, uh, in giving up uh, uh, Paul or informing about Paul and his work uh, to the Roman government, and hence he was imprisoned. And uh, so he's telling uh, young Timothy, you know, be very careful of uh, Alexander because, uh, you know, uh, Alexander was one who was part of the group and now he's no longer part of the group so uh, uh, Paul is warning uh, young Timothy. So there are times when you know uh, people will come into our lives and uh, you know uh, of course people are important we have to build them up in the spirit uh, the kingdom of, of God is about building people but there are people who have their own personal uh, agendas um, you know that is not in alignment with uh, uh, with what God wants uh, us to do with our vision, our calling. Uh, so we need to be very careful who we receive, who we take into, who we welcome into uh, uh, our group or our so-called family. Uh, we need the discerning of the Holy Spirit in this area because just one wrong person uh, can trot God's word, can uh, bring about division, can bring about strife, can destroy the work of God. Uh, that we have started um, and there are times when uh, you know people we try to correct them we try to warn them uh, they don't heed the correction and as, as those those times we just give them up uh, you know so that they come to their senses they're able to understand and uh, they somehow repent and uh, uh, they realign themselves to God's ways uh, 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 and they accept his uh, forgiveness Okay, so we see that even in Paul's case, there are many people who he trained, who walked along with him, were part of his ministry team, who fell away. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, ministering with people, we said in the beginning of this chapter, uh, is important, but also the greatest challenge in Christian ministry is uh, basically ministering uh, to people because people are a great challenge. Uh, but we need uh, the, the help of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, his leading, his guidance and uh, you know um, uh, when we do it with the power of the Holy Spirit uh, there are times when uh, when people uh, you know are uh, uh, trying to bring in harm and danger trying to bring in strife uh, we don't fight against them because our fight is not against flesh and blood uh, but we just allow the Holy Spirit uh, to work in their uh, lives uh, uh, you know either to move them out of the team or uh, just to you know help them to understand help them to realign to the vision, the calling, the purpose of that team and uh, to walk alongside them. Okay, so this is all about uh, ministering to people uh, and, uh, you know, how we need to walk along with them, how we need to build them up in the spirit. Okay, any questions in this chapter six? Any questions? Hello class, are you all there? Very quiet. Yes, there's no okay. pressure on my side. Yes, success. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, I said there's no question. I'm okay here. Okay. Okay, if there are no questions, then we'll move on to Chapter 7, uh, Partnership and Co-Workers uh, in the Kingdom of God. Okay. Um, First Corinthians chapter three verse nine says, "For we are God's uh, fellow workers." Okay, we are all co-workers with God, uh, and you know um, we are, uh, you know, uh, co-heirs with Christ. We are heirs of God as well, but we are also in kingdom building as part of the kingdom of God. We are called to co-work alongside. Uh, with others okay uh, kingdom building is not about I me myself it's not about I doing everything independently but it is interdependence it's about fellowship it's about co-working with others uh, and we know that you know when we co-work with others uh, there's more that can be accomplished uh, then uh, when we uh, do things all by ourselves, there's more that can be uh, achieved when we work together in uh, partnership, 
okay even the uh, the dreams the vision the plans the purpose that god has for his kingdom uh, is not just you know uh, is given here yes, specifically to uh, different individuals but all in the context of uh, the body of christ together okay um, so all of our dreams the visions the calling that we have the gifts that we have is all uh, the functions that we have is all interlinked interconnected um, and even as we go about fulfilling god's plan and purpose for our lives uh, you know it's uh, uh, we need to partner alongside with like-minded people in the kingdom of god uh, who are also called uh, the same vision the same uh, function the same role the same responsibility you know uh, seeing how we can learn from them uh, from their own experiences how we can partner with them to build god's kingdom because you know kingdom building is not about building my empire it's not about building my kingdom but it's about uh, building God's kingdom. Okay, that is something we need to always uh, keep in mind. That kingdom building is all about uh, building God's kingdom, and it's not about uh, uh, you know uh, uh, just building our own kingdom, our own empires, our own organization, or our own uh, churches. Now, when we are building God's kingdom uh, and we are partnering with others, yes, you know, there's always this fear that you know conflict can happen because uh, when we uh, when we uh, relate with people, you know, there is always misunderstanding. There is always uh, something that we can agree on, some things that we totally don't agree on. There can be conflicts that happen. Um, uh, but irrespective of that, you know, um, uh, we need to do our best, like the word of God says, uh, you know, as far as possible, you know, uh, seek peace, maintain the unity of the uh, spirit. So as far as possible, yes, we can partner with others. We need to partner with others. As far as possible, we can also, uh, you know, seek peace and uh, maintain that uh, uh, unity. You know, uh, most often um, uh, the enemy doesn't have to do anything much uh, in the kingdom of God, it's because uh, believers are fighting against themselves. Uh, all the enemy has to do is just stand back and watch because, uh, you know, he doesn't have to do anything much. We're already uh, fighting against ourselves. We're fighting against people because of our own egos, our own pride, uh, our own, uh, you know, uh, um, insecurities that we have. Uh, 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 you know, kind of authoritative lifestyle patterns that we follow. Uh, these it, in itself can become such a hindrance for building God's work. And sometimes we can blame the enemy, saying that enemy is doing all of this. You know, he is trying to bring about this unity, this harmony, and we're trying to bind the evil one. Uh, when it's not just the enemy, it's our own, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's our own attitudes, it's our own heart attitudes our own behavioral issues uh our own egos our pride that we don't want to give up that's causing uh disunity and disharmony in the body of christ and hence uh, you know it's important it uh you know uh, we need to humble ourselves you know we need to uh, put down all of these things uh, to the greater purpose, uh, 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 we should always, uh, our focus should be on the greater things uh, and not on these little minor things that kind of bring, can bring in a divide and can totally bring in total division and strife. But, you know, look at the greater things that uh, together we are building God's kingdom. Uh, you know, it's okay if I've not been given the, the role, the responsibility, the fame, uh, the position, uh, or my picture is not there. Uh, but irrespective of that, I'm just going to minister because, uh, you know, I'm building uh, God's kingdom. Uh, you know, uh, Colossians says, uh, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all for uh, the kingdom of God or do it all for uh, Christ's sake. Uh, do everything that you're doing uh, to get a reward uh, from Christ. Do everything that you're doing, uh, you know, uh, to bring glory uh, uh, to God. So that should be our motive. That should be our agenda. You now, when that is our motive, that is our in agenda that, you know, God, whatever I'm doing, whether it's in word or deed, I'm doing it uh, so that your kingdom can be built up uh, for the glory of your name so that people will know you, uh, you know, then 
or whether we're given the first seat or the seat of honor, seat on the stage, or whether our name is uh, pronounced rightly or our uh, degrees are following our names or whether our, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our image is put on the brochure or not, you know, that will not be anything that will uh, uh, be a criteria. We will not hold on to those things, but we're saying, God, you just given me an opportunity to go and speak into the lives of people, you know, to build your kingdom, to extend your kingdom. Uh, so even as I'm going, even as I'm ministering, God, um, uh, you know, let people People's life be transformed uh, for your glory's sake, that your kingdom be extended. When we do that, you know, just imagine when all of us are, that is our focus, that is our agenda. Um, we will see the kingdom of God just, uh, you know, moving and spreading and uh, uh, rapidly just growing in a rapid pace. But, uh, you know, why is the kingdom of God not furthering? It's not, uh, it's not because, um, uh, God is not on the move or it's not because, uh, you know, like the early church, we are not flowing in signs, miracles and wonders. It's because there is no unity. When there is no unity and oneness, you know, uh, the spirit of God cannot work there. The anointing cannot flow. The anointing is basically the presence and the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. So uh, it's important uh, even as we are building God's kingdom or we are going to step into being kingdom builders to have our priorities right. What is our priority? Is it your name, your fame, uh, you being given the responsibility, you given the privileges, you being appreciated. If you're not appreciated, you don't do things, you, you step out of that role, you leave that church. Or is it, God, I'm going there uh, irrespective of whether I get the honor or uh, whether my name is called out or not, whether I get the right position or not, uh, that you would be glorified, God. You will receive the glory with hearts and lives being transformed, uh, people repenting. Uh, uh, your glory be manifest in a greater way of signs, miracles, and wonders. When we are pursuing that, when we are hungry for that, you know, we will see uh, a great move of God. We will see lives being transformed. Uh, we will see uh, the signs, miracles, and wonders happening in our uh, midst. Okay. Um, a kingdom that is divided amongst itself is weakness and power, uh, uh, is weak and powerless, sorry. A kingdom that is divided among itself is weak and powerless. Mark chapter 3 verse 24 says, a kingdom is, uh, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Okay, so is the kingdom of God uh, divided? Yes, there's many divisions. Uh, there's people just fighting amongst themselves, churches busy fighting amongst themselves. Um, and hence we see there's no move of God. Uh, God does not is not able to work in that place because there's strife, there's disunity. And so it's so important, you know, if you want to see the move of God and you're sensing that, you know, in your Bible study group or whatever, there is no move of God, you know, you could, uh, uh, you could sense and see that, then you can repent and, you know, bring about unity, oneness, and uh, you will see the power of God be manifested uh, uh, powerfully okay so a lot can be uh, done when we are willing to partner with each other our unwillingness to partner uh, with others can become a hindrance to uh, the advancement of the kingdom of uh, God you know as people who are part of the kingdom of God you know we are called to maintain uh, unity in the uh, spirit and uh, I think even this is the prayer of Jesus himself in John chapter 17 uh, the, the, the passage there in John chapter 17 is called the high priestly prayer of uh, Jesus uh, Jesus praying to the father and uh, he's saying father let them be one so who's the them he's talking about believers so he says father let them be one as we are one. And we see that, you know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, uh, one God in three persons, uh, three with three different roles and responsibilities, but working in perfect unity, in perfect uh, uh, oneness. You know, uh, we see even uh, Jesus, uh, you know, um, 
submitting himself to the Father. Uh, we see the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, uh, uh, take from the Father and he will reveal to you what is mine. Uh, you know, he will reveal only what uh, I am asking him to reveal. So we see that even though there is a kind of subjection uh, uh, with the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, uh, but we see that the three of them working in perfect unity, in perfect oneness, um, and that is their desire. That even as they work in perfect unity and oneness, uh, it's their desire, it's the desire of the Godhead that uh, we uh, who believe in them, uh, who are called uh, 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 the children of the Most High God were part of the kingdom, co heirs with Christ, heirs of God. Uh, you know, um, uh, we also work in this perfect unity and uh, oneness. So we'll come after the after the break, and uh, we will look at this in much more detail. We'll take a break now, and we'll come back after the break. 